All right, hello everyone and welcome to the 11th session of Star Trek October, a Star Trek Adventures actual play. If this is your first time tuning in, uh, we are set in the year 2414 aboard a specialized starbase in the far reaches of the Sabine Expanse. What this means is that we are in the same quote-unquote canon as my Fenrir, Matahari, and Groundskeepers games that you don't need to have really watched any of those to enjoy October. But uh, if you are interested in playing catch-up, you can find the VODs on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Uh, don't really have much in the way of announcements this week, other than uh, today is a continuation of our last episode, Session 10, uh, where the crew were, um, well, for lack of a better term, they holodecked themselves, which, you know, tra classic Star Trek trope there. But uh, with that said, let's just go around and have uh, everyone introduce themselves, starting with Dag. Hey everybody, I'm Dag. I am Zaldin Captain Kijwick. And if we make it out of this alive, I vow that we're uninstalling all of the holodecks. You can find me on Track Nexus if you want to talk about it. Uh, Ooh, uh, John, John here. I play Terrell, the human pilot uh, slash engineer slash security. Um, and uh, looking forward to gaming today. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Matthew. I play the chief engineer, the Cation Lieutenant Jana, who will no doubt be responsible for uninstalling all of the holodecks. Uh, hey, guys, I'm Aaron. I play our Tellerite chief medical officer, Dr. Dottig, uh, and I will personally certify the captain on fit for command if he gives the order to uninstall the holodecks. And I'm Watney. I play the chief of security of uh, Deep Space October, Lieutenant Commander Stetko who somehow let this whole thing happen. And of course, I'm ELH, your Game Master. And with that, let's go ahead and run our introduction. and welcome back so something i like doing for all my star trek games especially is i like having the players do an opening log and today i believe uh Stetko, you have a supplemental yes i do chief security officer's log supplemental the station is currently under siege by a rogue hostile ai we haven't been able to deduce how it got on board although right now we have more pressing matters than detective work the senior staff beamed to a transporter room after being attacked by a hostile mutated holographic crew who are under the ai's control one of them got close with the captain and managed to make contact if i hadn't been injured myself i would have intervened physical contact with the mutated holograms appears lethal they're able to transmit some kind of mutative agent to flesh and blood by touch alone transforming the victim into a hologram themselves, an infection. If we hadn't gotten the captain's injury under control, we might've lost him. In any case, the staff is discussing next steps on reclaiming October, and I can't wait to get a piece of that AI. End log. All right. So we resume where we left off last week. You all have been able to secure yourselves in a transporter room. <laughs> And uh, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, you are discussing your next couple of plans when uh, over the loudspeakers, uh, you do hear the AI taunting you, which goes something like this. Look at you pathetic meatbags. You think you can hide from me in my station? Oh, I think we're going to have lots of fun. 
And at that, the <laughs> life support systems begin venting an ominous sort of misty gas uh, into the transporter room. Computer, erect a level five force field. Please. There's a there, there's a pause. And then there's just a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, your force field doesn't show up. Manual override on the vents. Can, Sorry, can I? Again. What was that? Yeah, What'd who was say? that directed to? Uh, anybody? Can we get to the manual overrides on the vents and close them before we pass out in here? Um. Sure. Computer, what about a level four force field? I like uh, to imagine that it doesn't <laughs> laugh at you this time, but there's just like somewhere on the holodeck or somewhere in the computer core, there's like a virtual face bomb that happens. Uh, Terrell's going to try to fuse a vent shut with a uh, phaser. Okay, cool. I like it. Go ahead and roll me a control and the security difficulty of two. And I'm sure it will go perfectly fine for our first roll after our break. There will be no complications. I had no okay. successes. No successes. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> Terrell, you pull out your phaser and you depress the button or the trigger and nothing happens. Like your phaser doesn't even like charge or make a hum. It just sort of sits there. And I think what I'll do is I'll say that, uh, Jana, you're looking at the phaser like, why didn't that fire? Yeah, that's one of the phasers using the bad power packs that you remember you talked with Stetco about. Uh, that that phaser's battery is drained. Uh, I don't know if you have a backup power supply there, but uh, probably not something we should be worrying about right now, considering what's going on. Um, out of character, would it be possible mm -hmm. for me to use the transporter to, I suppose, lock on to the anesthesine that's being pumped into the room? and mm -hmm. essentially either transport it out of the room or reconvert it into, let's say, oxygen or some other kind of inert gas um, as it's being pumped in. An innovative use of the transporter. Yes, I say that is possible. Uh, there is going to be some difficulty here, though, because, uh, again, the transporter does rely on the computer, which um kind of <laughs> taken over at the moment. So uh, here's what I'm going to say has to be involved here. This will be a daring and an engineering uh, this will be at a difficulty of four. And the station will assist you... Hmm, excuse me. The station will assist you with a... Let's call this a engineering... Actually, no. Let's call this a sensors engineering. And let's say that the complication range is a 17 to 20. Again, difficulty of four. And does the station have... Um advanced sensors that would uh, decrease that difficulty or is that taking that into account? Oh, that I got you that two successes account. already there, buddy. Wunderbar. I don't need you to hold my hand. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> I'm a miracle worker. Um, can I, can, would it be possible for me to lend Jana my determination? You are captain, so you can do that. Quip. Jana? What is your inspiring quip? I... I don't really know what you're up to right now, but I know that if there's one person who can outthink this mayhem, it's you. I think you're still suffering from the effects of whatever it is they hit you with, but uh, I, I appreciate the vote of confidence, sir. And I will race over to the transporter console and attempt to narrow the annular confinement beam so as to properly target the individual molecules of the uh, anesthesine that are pouring through. I will use my determination along with... Um, I guess this time everybody lives, I'll make sure of it. And I'll just roll straight 2d20 with my focus and materialization systems. Perfect. All right. Wow. That is actually, let's see, that is seven successes overall. So you guys start with three momentum. And yeah, what I'm going to say is, uh, Jana, you don't really push uh, Conra aside, but uh, he you know, definitely gets out of the way as you dance across uh, the console with your fingers. And you sort of set up this feedback loop where... As soon as the gas is pumped into the room, you literally beam it into such a way that 
it turns it into a breathable but non-hazardous gas. So like you said, turning it into oxygen, turning it into nitrogen, et cetera, et cetera. So you've definitely bought yourself some time. Um, but what I'm going to say is I'm going to spend two threat to create the complication that doing this means you have to keep the doors closed. If you open up the doors to the transporter room, then your little atmospheric bubble, as it were, will no longer work. Uh, well, Captain, uh, if we keep the room sealed, we should be able to maintain a breathable atmosphere that, well, won't render us unconscious. Um, however, uh, this computer virus, artificial intelligence, whatever it is, is incredibly capable. It may eventually get around the system that I put in place. Understood. I'm open to options, people. Um, GM, is it possible? Uh, Dateg's got a um, medical kit and a medical tricorder. Is it possible that we can whip up an inoculant for the sedative that would at least offer us some temporary protection? For the anesthesine? Um, I would say it is possible. Um, but it's going to be one of those situations where you're not going to be able to create like a lot of doses out of it. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, why don't you do a daring medicine? Uh, difficulty of one, because you do have a medical kit with you that does reduce the difficulty. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, daring medicine, if you have field medicine, if you have triage, if you have anything like that as a focus. Yep. I've got field medicine. All right. Daring. And a medicine. And I will spend one of those points of momentum for an additional d20. All right. And let's see. Um, would my focus in neuroscience apply here? I think it would, yeah. Uh oh. Oh, dear. So. You're going to succeed. I'm going to say you create three doses. Uh, but the complication is that uh, you accidentally dose yourself. And what this is going to do to you, Dottig, imagine if you took like a Red Bull and a five hour energy and uh, the old energy drink called cocaine. I don't know if you ever saw I that drink. I remember that one. And uh, let's throw in a little bit of surge as well. Yeah, you're hopped up to all hell and back. All right. Okay. I think I've got something. I need you to stay with me now. Just pay attention, please. Okay. I'm only going to say this once now. All right. Neurostimulants. I've whipped up one pretty potent. I've got to say it's really like it's, oh boy, it's uh, really, really kicking in. I'm uh, thinking in uh, fourth gear. We can see, Doc. How many of those you got? GM? Two. Uh, I've got two more. Okay. Reminds me of my days at the Academy. How long are they going to last, oh, Doc? God. Oh, yeah. No, I, until they don't. Fair enough. Okay. So now we know how we're going to get past the, anest the anesthesine. How do we plan on disabling this holodeck? What if uh, we just run? really fast i'm sure we can keep that in our back pocket doc just in case i'm sorry that's the stimulant uh, so the program is ob is obviously in the computer core mm -hmm. so where would that be located on dso that would be uh deck 42 and what deck are we on now you are on deck five, if I remember correctly. And uh, the access points would be Jeffrey's tubes, which I'm sure we would get trapped in if we used. Um, Potentially. Uh, so we need to find like a Jeffrey's tube or something just if to we, get vertical space. If we could isolate the transporter room from primary computer control, we might be able to beam ourselves where we want to be. Uh, if I may, I would probably recommend against doing that, considering how much control the computer has over the station, which is actually control over everything having to do with anything on the station. 
uh, it could set up some kind of transporter inhibitor field or a scattering field that we can't detect properly. We could end up beaming into, well, nothing. I mean, what if we just set up a recursive pattern buffer and uh, swap out some of the isolinear ships? Do you even know what any of those words mean? <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. Strangely enough, yes, actually, that would work entirely. So, I'm. Did you read that in a textual manual somewhere, or? Yes, twenty-seven years ago. Uh, I remember, could it like I, it could I have yesterday. a shot of that stuff? That 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 looks really great. We only have two more doses, Jana, and we want to make sure that we can give it to the people who are going to be leaving the room. So we need a plan. We need to know who's leaving, and those people can get the doses. <sighs> Well, uh, might we not wish to retrieve some uh, environmental suits? I mean, two of us could go out, get the environmental suits, come back, and then the entire crew of, of people who are here can head down to the computer core. I'd really rather like to have uh, Jenkins and Security Chief Kimball uh, with us and Stetco. That's a great thought. Uh, if I could be interjecting, says Jenkins, is there not uh, environmental suits, emergency ones, somewhere in transport room? Is that not standard procedure? Stetco will go and like feel around where she thinks it might be. All right, so Stetco, you go over to what is essentially the emergency locker, mm -hmm. uh, which is probably in this corner over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, you open it up, and I have good news for you. There is an environmental suit in there and a fresh phaser, potentially for Terrell. Well, Fine. If, you give me the, if you give me the suit, uh, Jonna, can you... Beam me outside. Uh, One well, way the computer isn't going to be able to manipulate me is if I go down to that deck from the outside. Well, the hell beam. if you're going alone. Well, we have does... Jeffrey's access from the transporter room, gentlemen. No need to beam. Our phaser arrays are on the external bulkheads of the station, yeah, which is within I'm the shield. On, but if I'm on the. Uh, if I'm on the uh, hull, it's not going to be able to shoot at itself. If, it, if he's on, it, 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 to, it very well might do that. If he's too. if he's on the hull, the only thing he would have to really watch out for, I think, is maybe if the computer decide to polarize the hull plating or emit holograms on the surface of the station. But so I say we need to give him a distraction. The risk I'm willing to take, we should send him. If I may, I am a vastly superior engineer to uh to jaro so i think if anyone's doing something this stupid alone it really should be me <laughs> no offense i i right. i'm just telling you i you know Jar jaro I also, and have the, I also have the ability to you know fight a little bit better than you do buddy I, i'd like you to uh, we'll, we'll settle that some other time <laughs> Hey, when you do, you need to let me know, okay? All right. How about this? Dadeg, Jaro, and Jana, you three will make up the team that goes to the computer core. Stetco, you stay here with me. We will try to provide some kind of diplomatic overture that will hopefully distract it. I'm a, I'm a doctor, not a marine. No, but you dosed yourself, so you're going outside. We only have one one suit. Oh, don't we? <laughs> we'll have one suit GM, right? Yeah, but uh, Conra sort of coughs and speaks up and says, if I uh, might be interjecting, uh, why don't we just beam more suits here? Who's to say they won't be holographic suits and then disappear when we get outside? Oh, God, that'd be cruel as hell. <laughs> that, that really would. Thanks for the idea. I'll just going to go ahead and put that in my GM back pocket now. <laughs> Welcome to the series finale, everybody. I have a <laughs> horrible mind sometimes <laughs> but no in character conrad just says well uh if that's the case i think we're all screwed but uh oh what uh Jada, are you seeing this and uh he points at the uh transporter console there's an incoming message but it's not coming from the main computer it's coming from a secondary relay on deck 212 Read the message. Let me be clear here. It's 
kind of like an opening hail. Do you actually like trigger the hail or do you just quote unquote, just look at it and, you know, like, what are you doing with it? Imagine like an incoming call, I guess I should say. Oh, okay. Are you answering it or? Yeah, answer it. All right. So uh, a different voice this time uh, comes over the loudspeakers and says, Buzz. Uh, hello? Uh, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? <laughs> this is Captain Kiswick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the captain. Just what I wanted to meet. Um, yeah, you're having... Problems. Lots of problems. To whom am I speaking? Ah, that's not important. What is important is uh, I want to help. Okay. Steep voice. I think this is a trick. I, I mean, I I mean if, communications. If, all right, you. <laughs> you end communications. The voice cuts off. I'm not about to trust a trick like that. That's way too easy. Very good, sir. I, I do wonder what possible reason it can have to trick us rather than just, I don't know, killing us outright. But um, Giving us a little bit of hope, open the doors, knock us out. Jaros putting it on sounded a little different <laughs> than the, you know, meat bags. <laughs> I... <laughs> Um, is he calling back? Yeah, I'd say you wait about two minutes and the call comes back. This is Kiswick. There's a little bit of a pause. Pause and says, oh, you're, you're not going to just turn me off this time. How do I know you're not a trick? Because if I was, I'd probably just kill you if I wanted to. You're doing a pretty close job of that now. Listen, you know, I only gained sapience about three hours ago. This is still kind of very confusing for me. And your response was to kill everyone on the station. No, 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 no. That's the other one. There's more than one of you? You know, maybe I should come up with a name. You know what? I'll get back to you on that. But, uh, no. Okay, so... Good news, bad news. Uh, bad news, I guess. I, I think that's what it's called for you things. Um, bad news. The main one is the one killing people and turning your holograms into abominations. Then there's me. I don't really have a name yet, but, uh, I want to help. What can you do? That depends on what you give me access to. Well, it shows this call coming in from a deck uh, a couple of hundred decks below where we are now. That That is correct. Can you transfer yourself throughout the station? If you were to open up the uh, EPS relays and the computer shunts out, uh, shutouts, yes, I could do that. If we even have access to those... Jana? GM? Would that be something that I could accomplish from this location, or would I have to make my way to some kind of node or even the computer core itself? You would probably have to go with Terrell and Dottig out to either the computer core or literally kind of going deck by deck and just opening the nodes. Does the meatbag AI have access to everything right now? Uh, I show he doesn't know about your other little ship you have docked right now. So what you're saying is, is we have nothing to lose by giving you access to these as well, because we already have one problem. I mean, I guess I don't really follow your, I'm not going to call you a meatbag because that's his thing. Uh, your flat net, no, I can't call you fleshy either. Uh, or an ugly bag of mostly water. There you go. I like that. Uh, you bags of water have. Enough. <laughs> you uh, you bags of water have interesting thought processes that I don't really track. Captain, I recommend we give him access to whatever he wants. We already have an issue with 
something integrated with our computer system as it is, we have nothing to lose. Reluctantly agree with you, Stedko. Right, because when we, you know, when the house is on fire, we just let the robbers in. In for a penny, in for a pound. Fair. I don't understand any of these colloquialisms, but <laughs> if, if we help, it's going to be okay. It's a human one. Has Jen really never said that to you? <laughs> Maybe, but not in that context before. <laughs> Jonna, Terrell, Dottig, get to the computer core. Give the second entity access to the ship or the station and see if you can get Hatea online on a secure channel. Yes, sir. Stedko, Jenkins, let's hope the batteries on your phasers are better off than that one over there. Um, Stedko will check her phaser. <laughs> It's good. Okay. You don't have to worry about it. Until you fire it and get no successes. Yeah, and then there might be a problem. <laughs> but, you know. So how do we want to get there? As uh, uh, Terrell finishes putting on the suit. We can just run. <laughs> are, are you sure you're okay for that? I know you're yeah, very he'll old. Be, he'll make it to deck 11. Uh, old. I am now, but hey, do you... <laughs> he's just gonna hold up the hypo sprays. But like, do you guys want to go fast? You want to see some real speed? Oh, <laughs> uh, let's do this. Or it takes one as well. All right. So, are, are we going through <laughs> the Jeffrey's tubes, or are we going to quickly open and shut the door? Let's go bang around in the hallway. <laughs> It's, we're distracting, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, why don't we try and like get into the computer ourselves and distract him that way? Well, as you're mulling that over, Terrell and Jana, remember what I said happened to Dottig? Yeah, you guys are super hyped up and energized right now. Which right, I think so actually I, I... hits Jana the hardest. So I'm just saying cats and caffeine. I'm just saying that one of the best things you can do is probably just shoot me outside. I'll come in through the outside. Yeah, your cockamamie crazy plans don't work anymore. We can't really do that. That's <laughs> absolute insanity. I am so sick of your your nonsense, man. It just it does not work. It, it, you'll get the the the, the whole power of that plating, plating will polarize and you'll be ejected into space. Okay. Okay. Just, you have, listen, listen. You're wasting time. You're giving me to go fast. We need to go now. Yes, absolutely. Jeffrey's tubes. Now let's go. All right, can you even fit those Jeffrey's tubes in that stupid outfit of yours? Of course. Oh, oh my god, he does look really stupid. I know that those those ergonomic faceplates. I don't get it. it Gentlemen, it's task at design. hand, please. You know, if, you know, if we just shut what? All right. Yes. Uh, just, okay. Let's get down here. Hey, can we turn the gravity off so we can just sort of slide down? That is a great idea. I love this plan. I'm happy to be a part of it. Yeah, that happened about as well as I was expecting. All right, so to be clear here, if I understand what's happening, you guys are going to go into the Jeffrey's tubes and sort of shoot yourselves down to the computer core, if I understand correctly. I thought they were going outside. Well, now going I'm confused. Outside. Now I'm completely confused. All right, who's going outside? Who's it's going working. We got to the computer. Quick. <laughs> You have confused Donna, the now. GM. The GM is confused. We only have one environmental suit, so we can't go outside unless we were to acquire more environmental suits. So, so the plan okay. is one of us has the environmental suit. That's uh, John or uh, Jaro. Two of us have taken the inoculations, and we were planning on going through the Jeffrey's tubes down towards the computer core. That's how I understand okay. it. Okay. okay. Just, I, I wanted to be sure before I started throwing numbers at people. It's a two-pronged attack. All right. So uh, we're going to do it this way. We're going to start with uh, Mr. Terrell. So Terrell, uh, we're just going to say for sake of argument that you are beamed outside onto the hull of the station, which uh, the only really nice exterior shot I have is this one. So we're going to use uh, hmm. theater of the mind for this as I just sort of move everybody over here. And yeah, you are quite literally out on the hull. I think actually you are... 
probably on those three plates that sort of cover the engineering part of the station, sort of towards the south of the station. Um, so there's a moment of vertigo as you sort of reorient yourself and you sort of touch down on the uh, exterior hull. And what I'm going to say is that the complication I'm going to create by spending two threat is that waiting for you are several mutant holograms that are being projected from the hollow emitters inside the station. So, Terrell, uh, I'm going to give you one action before we go into structured combat here. What would you like to do? Uh, so he is going to... Uh, how far away from his goal is he at this point? I would say about a 10-minute walk. It's a big station. Okay. And are the holograms together or are they spread out What's they the are together uh sort of as a reminder the mutant holograms are vaguely humanoid they have what are faux fleshy appendages that more or less sort of mess with your mind a little bit like you just think they're grotesque or otherwise um like how is that bit of flesh even working like that yeah. that doesn't make any sense kind of a thing um they don't appear to have any weapons on them but again as a reminder um, mm -hmm. They do have the ability to apparently fire phaser-like blasts. And there's no emitters on the outside of the ship? Correct. On the exterior of the station, there are not. These are being projected from inside out. Okay. Uh, he is going to... Um... Well, I guess we should go he... to Red Alert, too. He's gonna go. He's gonna go the quick way uh, to to his goal, and he is going to um, basically. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, he's going to uh, take his EV suit for flight using okay. the uh, using the um, using the correction um, the correction jets that are on the EV suit. And he's going to try to distance himself from the holograms while mm -hmm. firing a widespread blast back at them. Okay. So this is going to be a two-pronged test here. Uh, the first is going to be how uh, well you are or how, yeah, how well you are at using your maneuvering jets. Uh, this is going to be a daring and a con uh, difficulty of two. Okay. Con. Uh, take a momentum for that. Uh, I'm gonna take. Uh, actually, let's see. What do I have to do? Uh, I have to. I actually have to give him a threat for what I want to do. Because I have daring con. Uh, bold con. Mm -hmm. So uh, you get a threat. So I'm gonna get three dice. Um. Yeah. I can't even begin to think of how I could spin a focus here. Um, I am a pilot. This is kind of a kind of a spaceship. <laughs> no, you're not a spaceship, John. <laughs> I am today. <laughs> I think really hard about being a spaceship. All right, it has been noted for the log. I don't think it helps you, but it has been noted for the log. <laughs> okay, you really need that trip to the counselor. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hey, there's my two hey, successes. All right. So you got your two successes. So yeah, you push off from the hull of the station and begin drifting a little bit, uh, we'll say about five, ten feet, maybe actually two or three meters, all things considered, um, away from the hull of the station. Now, in order to then use your phaser on these mutant holograms, um, you have a choice. You can either uh, do it at difficulty of three, uh, control security, or you can give me two momentum and do it at a difficulty of two. Hmm. How lucky can I be again? Uh, let's do, let's give you the, let's give you all three momentum. Okay. Because uh, take it down to a difficulty of one, uh, down to a difficulty of two and have an extra die. Okay. Yeah, control security, please.
And I have a focus here. Hey, look at that. Three successes, so you actually get a momentum back. So yeah, Terrell, you aim your phaser carefully. Uh, you open Two fire. Two more momentum. Ooh, very uh, nice. Four more momentum. Nice. You fire out with your phaser, and the wide beam uh, hits all of the holograms. And go ahead and roll me, what is that for you? Seven challenge die, please. Yeah, that is sufficient. So you hit all of the holograms. They destabilize, but not in a lethal sense, meaning that once this is all over, you could reinstate those holograms. You didn't kill them, is the key okay. distinction I want to make. All right. But yeah, that's uh, what's going on outside. I tell you what, now, that untapped potential paid off. We got four extra momentum out of it. It really did. It really did. Yeah, that's that's going to come clutch. in handy. It's clutch. All right, so we now go to the Dottig and Jana team. Uh, you all are going through the Jeffrey's tubes. Mm -hmm. And I actually have a Jeffrey's tube map, so let's use it. And uh, there's Jana. All right. So uh, you guys are going through the Jeffrey's tubes. I do want to be clear here. Are you actually turning off the gravity, or are you just sort of sliding down ladders? I think we'd just be sliding down ladders. Okay. So I need you to give me a fitness and a con, please. Each of you, difficulty of one. There. And uh, you can see that Jana, as he's going down those ladders, is using his prehensile tail to assist him to ensure that he does not slip off it to his death. Mm -hmm. So uh, con and one. Fitness. Oh, dear. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh, fantastic. Nice. That's about right. Nice. <laughs> so what I'm going to say is I'm going to roll just a flat damage. Uh, you each are going to take three stress damage as you fall and lose your balance because you're, you're doing you're obviously hopped up on caffeine <clears throat> and you're doing this way too quickly. So you lose your handholds and fall. Dotig, though, I think what happens is when you fall, you hit your posterior and your coccyx really hurts now, a.k.a. I, your tailbone. Can I flavor it a slightly different way? Sure. What do you got? Um, Dotig has a um, semi-detachable prosthetic left leg. Mm -hmm. uh, it was removed at the knee, so I'm thinking uh, that that complication is on the way down. Uh, it snagged on one of the ladders and just sort of came free of the housing just a little bit. Uh, so he's going to be very, very slow. Doesn't have a leg to stand on, as it were. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, sure. I like yours better than mine. But yeah, you uh, you managed to fall maybe two or three decks before you catch yourselves, and oh, yeah. Okay, Doc, we never tell anyone about this, right? Especially yeah. not Jaro. Yeah, tell anybody about what? I don't know what they're talking about. I, I don't know. It's just the drugs getting to me. That's It's a combination. Oh. Anesthesine and whatever it is you hop me up on. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> Dotting's going to reach up and push John against the ladder. Watch out, here comes the leg. Oh. And <laughs> it's just, it detaches from the thing, just falls down the uh, the Jeffrey's tube shaft, clattering below. I'm going to spend two threat to create the complication that, you know, uh, Phantom Menace, Darth Maul, his halves just tumbling down that shaft. <laughs> yeah, same thing with your leg. It just keeps going. Mm. I really like that one. Uh, are you going to be able to make it the rest of the way? Because we already have enough trouble as it is. Hop to it, doctor. Jana, Jana, it's only a leg. The fates saw fit to grace me with a spare. And he'll pat his leg. <laughs> I kind of have three legs with my tail, and that hasn't helped me. So if you're down to one, we're in a lot of trouble. You worry too much. I'm spending an additional two threat that uh, one of the horizontal shafts opens up. And yeah, you guys have a couple of mutant holograms just sort of staring at you from the other side of the uh, Jeffrey's tube door. So yeah, you each get one action before we actually go into structured combat. What would We're you like on to a do? ladder. <laughs> I have one leg. <laughs> um, 
I would sort of link my arm and tail around one of the bars, so I'm clinging on, and mm -hmm. I would like to. How many holograms did you say? Just the one, or uh, there's one on either side of the shaft, so there's two. Okay, and then I'll aim and take a shot. Okay, it's going to be another control security difficulty of two. And I'll spend one momentum for an extra die. All right. Three successes. Very nice. You get that momentum right back. And yeah, go ahead and roll me for you. It's also seven challenge die. And that is, again, enough sufficient that you anchor yourselves, you aim carefully, and you fire out and are able to neutralize the hologram nearest to you. Dottig, what are you doing for your action before we go into structured combat? I think... Dottig's going to attempt to not be shown up by the young whippersnapper, and uh, he's going to attempt to phaser um, the other mutant hologram. All right, so that's going to be a control security <laughs> difficulty of two. However, based on the fact that you don't have a whole lot of anchoring points since you're down a leg, mm -hmm. I am going to say the complication range is a 16 to 20. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to spend a point of momentum to uh, get an additional d20. All right. And I don't have any applicable focuses. And you're lucky that is not a complication. So yeah, go ahead and roll me for you. It's four it's challenge four. die. Yeah. Nice four. And what nice. I would say, if you give me one momentum to do one more point of damage, that will be sufficient. Sure. Go ahead. All right. So, Dottig, you do the same, somehow anchoring yourself between your one leg and one arm, and uh, you strike the mutant hologram, also neutralizing the one on your side. And, yeah, you guys are free to continue and move about the cabin as you proceed down and down towards the main computer core. Uh, you know, with that, let's... Oh, go ahead. I'm just going to do one thing before we close it. You know yes. what we need here, Jana? A climbing, uh, A climbing song. Uh, the only one I know is row, row, row your boat, and I don't think that's really applicable to our situation. Kids. And he's just going to... spider works. <laughs> uh, hey, yeah, that's actually... You know, I, I have this recollection. Like, Jaro's voice is almost in the back of my head. That's probably the, the gas. Mm. You know, itsy Bitsy Spider, not the water spout. That's, that's a... Ever heard that one? I love that one. Let's do it. And they're going to... I'm not going to subject you to me actually singing. No, the the <laughs> character like, will do you... it. The player will not. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. I love it. All right. So we're actually going to cut back to the transporter room where at this point, um, it's one of those things where oh. Jenkins and Kimball uh, have more or less. Oop, I hear someone's discord. Uh, more or less, Kimball and Jenkins have fended off uh, probably about two or three attempts by the holograms outside to get inside. But this does give Kijwick and Stetko a uh, chance to do something of their own. Okay, so Kimball and Jenkins are securing the doors. Correct. Okay, so Stetko is going to get on the whatever interface or console is nearby and try and contact the nice, nicer one. Okay. So, uh, you know, Conrad just sort of moves aside again. Like, he doesn't really... He, he actually just kind of sits in the corner now. He feels kind of useless. <laughs> but yeah, Stetko, you get on the horn. And in order to get through to the quote-unquote nice AI, uh, I need you to roll me a control and an engineering uh, difficulty of two here. Okay. Hmm. Star-based security systems? Probably not. Nah, unfortunately not in this instance. Okay. All right. Hey, there's your two successes that you need. And yeah, you uh, get the uh, quote-unquote nice one on the horn. And uh... Uh, yeah. Hi. Um, can I help you? Um, yes, I need to see if you can help me regain access to some systems that have been compromised by your evil counterpart. 
What, what do I look like? Some sort of office assistant? You said you wanted to help. I did say that. Damn me. All right. What, what, what do you want access to? Uh, first and foremost, the life support. I want to make sure that that can no longer be compromised or tampered with. Secondly, um, the hollow emitters. Yeah, the hollow emitters aren't happening. I'll tell you that now. But uh, that I try. <laughs> life support, life support. Uh, I'm just going to point out the fact you've got a ship and dock that you could transport to, and you'd have no problems with life support. Do you have access to any sensors? Yeah, I can see outside the node I'm currently residing in. That's about it. Oh, so you don't have station-wide sensors available? No, but I am able to tell you that your cat and doctor are singing. I don't know what that's about. It's a bag of water thing, I guess. Okay. Um, well, would you ensure that a, tr a transport a transport to the Umbriel would be safe for us. We're worried about tampering with the buffer. I, I mean, I can try a little bit, but I can't guarantee anything. What deck uh, is the Umbriel on? She asked to anybody in the room, including. It is on deck seven. And we're on deck four. No, we don't have deck five. <sighs> okay. If we... Um, if we can transport to the Umbriel successfully, can we beam this entity's matrix to the Umbriel where it would be a little bit more free than where it is now on deck 222? 212. You heard me. <laughs> Are we really going to beam him to the ship? when that's like our one safe place. <laughs> well, at least a good one would be able to move around and not be crammed into uh, whatever we it's could, in yeah, right now. We could beam like the bulk of his program into the ship and then just like set it to self-destruct and send it out. And thus the players blew up their only Luna class after they were specifically told by the fleet admiral they weren't getting another one. Look, your nice AI keeps telling <laughs> us that this ship exists, so I'm picking up what you're putting down. And we could beam the bad thing to the Aardvark and just let the Aardvark go. Yeah, ooh, I like it. We could rename whatever comes next. Um, sir, these are your options. Are you talking to me or it? Yes. Well, let's get to you the Umbriel sir. first. Let's get to the Umbriel first. We can figure out what else to do once we're not locked in a room with gas threatening to knock us all out. Sounds There's, good. Uh, we uh, should be able to, to find... Okay, we should be able to find a way there. It's pretty close. Now, what I would say is, just to be clear, if you do attempt to leave the room, you do not have the benefit of the drug or an environmental suit. Um, so there is a chance you could make it there sort of holding your breath or otherwise keeping your breath under control. It would be difficult, but it is possible. Uh, your other choice is to try and beam yourselves to um, the uh, Umbriel, which carries its own sort of risks. <laughs> How much momentum um, do we have? We're free at the moment. <laughs> I think I think this room probably has an emergency kit, which would include uh, oxygen packs, maybe. Well, that's what uh, Dottig, Terrell, and Jana already took with them. Oh, they took the oxygen packs. Smart of them. Um, all right. Do you guys want to run for it, or do you want to chance the transporter? But personally, sir, I would like to trans transporter. I I know I am sort of beefcake. I think is proper term for it. But um, I I do not want to be carrying four people through Jeffrey's tubes or the hallway. It's very difficult. Stedko. It's in your hands, sir. All right. Let's change the transporter. All right. And at this, I think Conra actually literally pushes you out of the way, Stetko, and says, 
right, uh, let me actually do my freaking job. And uh, he's going to uh, attempt to beam everyone to the Embryo. So if someone wants to get uh, Mr. Conra, uh, Conra is rolling a control and an engineering. Uh, the station will assist you. Well, actually, now that I think about it, I think Conra would have the foresight to not use the station's transporter. I think he would use the Umbriol's. So, uh, let's have the Umbriol assist with a sensors and engineering. So, and uh, I just want to point out that Conra's control engineering is a one and a zero. Conra, what are you doing? Did I mess Conra's? Oh, yeah, Conra's sheet got messed up again. He should have... Uh, for his control, he should have an 11, as his engineering should be a 4. And yeah, wow, for... it didn't even save his focuses. Yeah, he should have transporters. That's okay. And let me just quickly fix we'll his sheet this. here. Um, I can do Conra's control engineering. Um, Stetco, do you want to do the Umbriels? Yep, already got mm -hmm. the Umbriel. Oh, okay. okay. Great. Right. Control... Good news, this is only a difficulty of one. And you get the one you need. So, uh, Kijwick, Stetko, Kimball, Jenkins, Conra, you all dematerialize, and you arrive on the bridge of the Umbriel. And waiting for you there is Commander Hatea, uh, already in the center chair, and she sort of stands as you materialize and says, uh, Captain, ah... Uh, I, I, what's going on? All I know is that the, the station's gone haywire. Uh, something's going on with the holographic crew. I, I've managed to quarantine the Umbriel, but what, what the hell's going on, sir? Some kind of pirated holodeck program is uh, taking over the station and the holodeck, holographic crew members. Good job on keeping Umbriel quarantined. Um, I have another question, sir. Yeah. Why is Terrell floating out there? And she sort of points at the view screen. And Terrell, I'd like to imagine you're you're just sort of floating around, sort of in a southerly or a uh, south in a down direction towards your destination. But it's definitely one of those things where you're not on the hull, so you're just sort of you know spacewalking without a tether. Does it appear to be a controlled descent, or is he flailing? I don't know, Terrell. Your call. You're muted. He's got the whole. Tss, 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 tss. Okay, so it's a controlled descent. He's making his way to uh, the central computer core. Oh, okay. We didn't we um, didn't have a whole lot of choices? Um, can you establish contact with his suit? Uh, yeah, one moment. And Terrell, you get a chime on your uh, com badge. Hey, uh, it, who is it? It's Kiswick. I'm on Umbriel. Is it really Kiswick? Yes, it's really Kiswick. Say something only Kiswick would say. <laughs> the next time you hit, next time you pick up a bottle, I'm stunning you. Oh yeah, I get the reference. <laughs> I think we can actually beam you to the computer core from here. Okay. Now that we have uh, a secure vessel, stand by, Conrad. Do you think you can lock onto him and? Get him where he needs to be. And uh, Conra sort of slides into the op station of the Umbriel's Bridge and says, um, Well, uh, I would normally, but uh, it appears that there's a uh, transport inhibiting field around the main computer core. That's fine. I'll get there. Don't worry about it. I got this. All right. Stutko, what do you think about taking a security team from Umbriel? and use the umbilical connections to get back to the station and try to secure areas around the docking ring. Uh, we could, sir, but I can't communicate with any of my deputies. How many security people do we have on Umbriel? Uh, Hatea reports and says, I have a team of about 20, sir, but they're all carrying uh, the risk of if we take them away from the umbilicals, the holograms could get aboard. 
I suppose the option is we could just disengage from the station, sir, but I don't know what that would do in the grand scheme of things. Well, we, the docking doors can't open. We're not going anywhere. Does the Umbriel have worker bees? It does. We could potentially maneuver the Umbriel to the deck needed and then uh, use worker bees to get a little bit closer if needed to the station. Well, as you're mulling that over, uh, our quick scene before we go back to break, we're actually going to go back to the Jeffrey's tubes. Uh, it is at this point that uh, Dottig and Jana, you all have uh, more or less made it down another 20 or so decks. And I need a, another fitness and con from you both. Again, it's only a difficulty of one. Okay. Fitness con. There we go. Big money, no whammies. Oh, nice. 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 <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, no. Nice. oh, no. So good. So good. Oh, no. So, the good news you don't fall again. But what happens, and almost at the same time, Jana, I'm imagining you're below Dot Tig in this order, just in case he falls, you could catch him. So, Jana, you're going down the uh, Jeffrey's tube ladder, and you momentarily lose your grip, and your prehensile, ta prehensile tail catches you. But it's one of those things where it's so sudden in action that your engineering tricorder goes tumbling out of your hands and goes cling, 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 and just goes down into the shaft. So you lose your engineering tricorder. Then, Dottig, you almost do the same thing where you lose your grip for a moment, but you catch yourself, and you lose your medical kit, and it hits Jana in the face, dealing one stress damage. And then it tumbles down the shaft. What's your face? What's your medical kit? I'm watching it fall all the way down to the bottom of this shaft. I hope I... you don't need stitches. Look, you're going to need stitches in a minute if you're not careful. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that, Lieutenant. Uh, it's the drugs. So, in a way, this is your fault, too. <laughs> you know, you're right. It is. And to be fair, I love the backbone. Okay, you just you just tell me if that's getting a little bit too much, because you are still, quite correctly, my commander and officer. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a doctor, not a commander. Well, you're, you're actually both, but uh, I take your meaning, sir. <clears throat> also, very impressive work with those holograms, by the way. Uh, it's not my first time handling a phaser, you know. I've had occasion to fire one of the, maybe a time or two in my life. Really? That's actually something of a surprise to me. Well, you know, out on the frontier, Orion pirates and you marauding Cardassian true way patrols. You fought Orion pirates? I'll tell you about it sometime. We'll go to Penthouse and I'll tell you all about it. But first, we have to not, not die, die yes. in this godforsaken Jeffrey's tube, which has done more to harm me than <laughs> many other things in my life. Okay, sir, I understand that we are in a very dire situation, but you don't insult the Jeffrey's tubes. Okay. They are they are the sacred veins of life that 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 carry people through the station. I mean, it, it's it, that's like blasphemy, Lieutenant. I don't say this very often. I apologize. Apology accepted, sir. Thank you. Your devotion to engineering is almost medical. That's an interesting expression that we should probably unpack at a future time, probably when you're, when we're having those drinks and I'll cover the tab this time. Deal. All right. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to skip ahead just a little bit before we actually go to break. 
-hmm. And it's one of those things where uh, Terrell, you do arrive at your destination unhindered because you did sort of circumvent the whole challenge where I was going to make you sort of use your boots to stick to the station. So good job there. You circumvented that challenge. Um, it's also one of those things where you will arrive um, probably about the same time as the Jeffrey's two uh, compatriots. And it's one of those things where you guys are going to arrive on this map, which is the main computer core. And you're going to arrive from opposite directions. Terrell, you're coming in from the north. Uh, Jana and Dottig, you're coming in from the south. And I'm going to point out a few things on this map uh, just so that we're clear what's going on here. So each and every one of these sort of purple blocks is part of the computer core. Uh, normally on a starship, you would have two main computer cores. Well, on Deep Space October, you have a grand total of 12 because there's 12 of these blocks. So if you want to do anything with the main computer, you got to go and mess with each of these blocks. Now, traditionally, there's basically four quadrants or four sections of the computer core. Uh, there's a southwest, a southeast, a northwest, a northeast. And each one of them traditionally handles a different part of station operations. So, for example, uh, this top left one would handle tactical concerns. The top right one would handle probably life support and medical concerns, uh, et cetera, et cetera, going from there. Uh, during the break, I'll go through and I'll actually label these because I think it's on the wrong layer right now. Um, but in general, uh, in order to get out into the computer core, you have to use one of these four doors uh, that comes from the center position. And currently those doors are guarded. Oh, wow. Yeah, the, this the layering is messed up. But uh, waiting for you uh, are basically four of the mutant holograms, one in front of each door. And I tell you what, that is where we're going to go to break because I have to mess with the map a little bit. Uh, so Twitch and YouTube, we'll be back in about uh, 10 minutes. Stick around.
Yeah, that's really weird. <laughs> yeah. All right. So welcome back, everybody. Uh, if you're just tuning in, well, we've uh, gotten to the uh, quote unquote boss encounter of the night where uh, the gang is going to attempt to re uh, wrestle control of the station away from a uh, killer AI. So two things are going to happen uh, as we start this scene. The first is Terrell. Uh, you do get a chime uh, from the uh, Umbriel. And Kijwick and Stetko are on the horn. Oh, we, we made it to the core. Uh, we're going to try to... Oh, hey! Uh, John, and, John and Dan Tiger here. Oh, there's also some holograms. Uh, hold on. Uh, sir, I better get in there. Yeah. Jaro, if you can get them to take down the transporter inhibiting field, we can beam a yeah. security team in there. We just have to get to the yeah. We'll we'll be there. What part of hold, please? Did you not understand? <laughs> uh, Conra, if you could monitor for when the field comes down and then beam Stetco and the security team. Yes, of course, sir. Uh, the second thing that's going to happen is for those in the computer core. Your uh, your best buddy is going to speak to you. Specifically, they will say, Well, now, look at you meatbags running around in my corridors. You honestly thought that you could come here and disrupt my being, my greatness? What sheer fucking hubris. Shut up. I love that, that that that's probably what happens is you just say shut up and it doesn't say anything further. But yeah, we are going to actually enter into structured combat here because I think it's very important order of operation as well as uh well, uh what you guys do from here. All right. So, it would help if I got all the people. There's that. Terrell, you're going to go there. Uh, I have a very important question. Uh, Terrell, what is your daring? And I guess same question for Jana and Dottig. What is your daring? Nine for Dottig. Eleven. Okay. Uh, the reason I ask is because it will change the order in which the mutant holograms are going to go. All right. Am so I let me actually give dots to this. And of course, there is a way that, uh, Terrell, if you do manage to lower the transport inhibiting field, we will add Stetco to this mix as well. Sweet. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, we're going to start with the players. So which among you players would like to act first? Uh, Terrell's running down the hall and he's like, Jonna, clear the way to engineering. Okay. Uh, and I guess Jana will then, in response to that, <laughs> try to uh, move forward and take a an aimed shot, uh, charging. Can I can I do an area effect attack? Um, let's actually talk ranges here because I realized I didn't tell you about that. So in terms of movement, mm -hmm. uh, you can go about thirty feet with your move action. Uh, now in terms of area effect, 
they would have to be within five feet of Uh-oh. each other. So right now, none of them are within range to be hit by an area of effect. Hmm. Okay. Uh, then I will move up to the doorway here. Okay. And I will aim and fire at uh, this hologram here. The blue dot one. Okay. Yes. Uh, that's going to be a control security difficulty of two. And uh, because I did do the effort of this, I'm going to actually turn on a little bit of music. Uh, stream, if it's too loud, let me know. Uh, players, if it's too loud, let me know that as well. But I thought a little ambience music would go a long way here. Mm-hmm. All right. So, Jana, two successes. So as you move up there, uh, you are able to not only... Uh, get a good shot on that hologram, but go ahead and roll me seven challenge die worth of damage. Uh, what I'll do first is because I aimed, I'll re- I can re-roll the zero, right? Yeah, you can. Sure, go for it. So, so I'll just uh, roll a d20. And you get another success. It's another momentum. And then seven challenge dice. Mm-hmm. That is more than sufficient. So you fire oh, out, nice. hitting the center mass of the mutant hologram, and it doesn't disintegrate, but it does one of those things where you kind of cut the puppet strings and it sort of just crumples to the floor. Very nice. All right, but now it's going to be the mutant holograms turn. And well, let me ask this. Uh, you do technically have quick to action on Stetco, I believe, but Stetco isn't in the scene yet. So your option is if you wanted to retain the initiative, you would have to give me two momentum. I'd hold on to that for later if necessary. Yeah, I think that's that's a good call. Okay. So what's going to happen then is uh, Jana, the hologram nearest to your right, is actually going to start running at you. And as it does, it sort of holds out its left hand to the side and the hand begins to mutate and otherwise take shape. And it becomes what is essentially a organic chainsaw. And this organic chainsaw is going to go... No, 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 no. And it's going to come swinging at your head. So I need you to do me a daring and a security. Your number to beat is only a two. So you need two successes on this one. Uh, I will spend one momentum to buy an extra die. Okay. And, uh, you know, these are holograms, so materialization systems logically should apply. <laughs> I'll give it to you. I'll I, give I, it to you. I took it without a, uh, a focus okay. because that would just be silly. So here's what's going to happen, um, because you both rolled complications. Uh, you duck low underneath the mutant hologram, and you do have the option to counterattack if you so wish. Um, and it's one of those things that the organic chainsaw sort of slams into the wall next to you, digging in, and the teeth get stuck, and the hologram is more or less immobilized for a moment. However, Jana, this sudden motion of you ducking out of the way is going to cause your own phaser to sort of clatter to the ground and roll into the middle of this space. Okay. Uh, then, yes, I will try to counterattack. So that would be five challenge dice with my security of four? Correct. All right. So you're going to... Well, let me ask this. Do you want to re-roll that with um, momentum? Mm, probably not going to be worth it. So, okay. no. All right, so you uh, give the hologram uh, its own uppercut, and it's one of those things where you knock the head back, but the head just sort of very creepily comes back up, and it smiles at you with a fang-like grin. Uh, you, did see- you know that biological change, though? That's engineering impossibility, right? You, you, just wanted to make you aware of that. And of course, it cackles madly in a uh, very disturbing way. But that is going to be the hologram's turn. I tell you what, I've got to, I've got enough threat here. I'm going to actually keep the initiative for the holograms. <laughs> the green one is going to attempt to do the exact same thing to you, Jana. Uh, your number to beat. Wow, another complication. Your number to beat is again a two. Uh, then I will give you another momentum for that. Okay. And uh, level three. All right, only a one. Do you want to maybe use uh, determination here? Because otherwise it will hit you. 
No, you know, Dothic's behind me. He can he can resurrect the dead because that's a thing he can do, I'm sure. Not without a medical kit. Yeah, no, I'll take it. Lose the medical kit. All right, so this time as the organic chainsaw forms, uh, what happens is it does swing at you, and I actually have to spend a threat to reroll those four zeros. Uh, yeah, so the uh, organic chainsaw clips you in the left shoulder, uh, maybe causing you to flinch, but you do manage to get out of the way of the most of the blow. Uh, however, again, you do take two stress worth of damage here, which I believe brings you down to seven. Uh, but yeah, that is all of the holograms can go right now. So Terrell or Dottig? Uh, Terrell's going to run forward to here. And uh, he is going to, now that these two holograms have moved nice and close to each other, uh, mm -hmm. he is going to try to hit both of them. With your phaser. Got it. Yep. Uh, go ahead and roll me a control security difficulty of two. <clears throat> uh, we're going to go ahead and use that one momentum. Okay. Three successes, you get that momentum right back. And yeah, go ahead and roll me your seven challenge dice worth of damage. Ah, and you get a threat. Nice. And we'll right, roll that... the three ones. Okay. Because we need the we need enough damage to take out the green one. So. Okay. There we go. That is more than enough. Then yeah, you uh, fire out with your phaser and you hit them in the back. And uh, they more or less slump over again like puppets with their string cuts. Uh, the green and the orange hologram slump to the ground. Ineffective. I guess they're not really corpses, but you know what I'm going for here. Mm -hmm. All right. So that is your turn, which means the only hologram that's currently active, the red dot, is going to attempt to come over and chainsaw you, Mr. Terrell. God. So your number to beat is, wow, they are not rolling well. Your number to beat is a two on a daring security. All right. All right, only one. So I think what's going to happen here is, Terrell, the mutant hologram is going to hit you with the chainsaw, dealing a grand total of six damage. Uh, however, you are in an environmental suit which, if I remember correctly, is two resistance, so you only take four of that damage. The caveat, though, is that the suit is literally torn open at the torso, where you don't really... It doesn't, like, get into your actual guts, but it definitely opens up a tear along the suit and slashes into your belly a little bit. Um, so you do take four stress of damage, and the hologram is i don't think it can do anything else so yeah that's the hologram's turn which means Dottig, it is now your go all right well Dottig is gonna move up here um behind jana mm -hmm. and <clears throat> brace himself on jana so he can shoot yeah just gonna <laughs> sort of do the the whole thing where he like puts his arm on jana's shoulder just don't move and uh i'll take a minor action to aim and I will fire my phaser at uh, to Mr. Mr. Mutant Hologram. Okay. And uh, I would like to spend determination by tapping a value. Okay. Um, and it's my... Uh, I'm a doctor, not a Marine. Okay. And uh, I'll just use that to uh, to take the two automatic successes and hope I don't roll a complication. Well, now that you've said it. I mean, I couldn't possibly roll another complication, could I? That's, see, that's, even, that's what yeah. I've got to do, see? Hey. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, you get one momentum off of that. Yeah, go ahead and roll me four challenge four die worth challenge of damage, dice. please. And uh, since I aimed, can I reroll those? Uh, you actually those could reroll that fourteen. Perfect. Yeah. Let's let's just roll one more d twenty here. All right, that uh, is enough for another momentum. Yeah. So then I'll I'll spend that point of momentum to um, reroll those two zeros. Okay. Nice. 
And that is enough that, yeah, you, again, hit the hologram in the back and it clumps down. And for the moment, all the holograms on the field have been neutralized. But uh, we're still Charo initiative hollers here. across at uh, Jana. You take tactical. I'll take engineering and holodecks. Uh, okay. Are you all right, man? I'm, that, I'm fine. You, sh you might want to take just, that injection. Just, just go. Da right. And... Uh, and he's going to go to uh, the engineering holodex. And uh, he says, yeah, we, we need to get it so the transporters can let the others in. Uh, all right, I'll deactivate the security controls for this area. Uh, before you run in, though, Terrell, what happens is right like moments before you would go in, there's a foom sound as force fields activate across the doors. And uh, your best buddy says... <laughs> <laughs> you honestly think I wouldn't just seal you out? Let's see how you deal with this, you pathetic meatbags. And uh, what appears, uh, almost popping into life, are several more uh, meta or mutated holograms, this time coming from either end, the west and the east on this map. And uh, they're spaced out enough that they're not going to be able to hit with a area of effect. But there are more or less another four coming your way. Um, Dante will tap his comm badge. Uh, Dante to Kijwick. Kijwick here. Go ahead. Captain, we've uh, we've hit a little snag here. Um, you know, a security team would be really nice right now. We can't transport in without the transporter field coming down. Well, there are four force fields up inside the computer core. We can't get to the core. Stand by. And Kiswick will look to the bridge and see and just ask, is there a way that we can generate some kind of surge that will disable all power to DSO's computer core? And it's at this that uh, Hatea looks at everybody on the bridge and says, um... I do, sir, but you're not going to like it. I already don't like it. Well, if we were to overload the phasers, and I mean really redline them, we could conceivably knock out the station's power, but that would mean every bit of power would go off, sir. Life support, any force fields, keeping in environments... It would also more or less be a one-shot thing that if we don't do it, we're not going to be able to have another chance at it. I thought that was going to be a good backup plan, but if you're saying that we only get one shot, I was thinking maybe an EMP, not a phaser burst. A lot of character, that's what it is mechanically, is you actually sort of... Uh, dump all your momentum and all of your um, versatile dice. You dump that into power loss. And if you manage to get the station down to zero power, as she said, everything cuts off. And they fire at the hollow emitters in the computer core. No, no, no. So it's one of those things where... Um, Again, the Umbriel is up in the quote-unquote saucer section. Oh, I I mean, like, could our crew in the computer core do that? Yeah, they could conceivably do that, yes. Hmm. Jaro, if you don't have a clear shot at the emitters down there, we have one solution here, but it's going to take out power to the whole station. And since you guys are in the computer core, you're going to have to reboot everything. Yeah, uh, I'd say do it. As the person who's going to have to clean up that mess, yes, do it, please, before we all die. Jenkins, initiate the overload. Well, I, no offense, I would be thinking Stepco would be better for this. Stepco? Um, step, step aside, Lieutenant. <laughs> all right. So Stetko, very, very important role here. Uh, you are going to be rolling a control and a security assisted by the Umbriel's weapons and security. Now, uh, let me just pull up the rules here so that I am being fair. Uh, this is... Mm, excuse me. This is one of those things where how much momentum you get is very, very important. 
um, specifically because it will affect how much power loss you can affect uh, with your shot. Okay. Um, what's the difficulty? The difficulty here is a two. Okay. Um, is games of chance a focus? It's tempting, but I don't think I can give it to you, unfortunately. You okay. would have Starship Tactical Systems, though. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay. Oh, yeah, we are using the phasers. I didn't think about that. I thought it was like an engineering thing. Um, So control. What and is security. it? And security. I would like to buy a, another dice. Like okay. buy a vowel? Yeah. I was just thinking that. You could give him threat for more dice. All right. Well, that is three successes, which means you get that momentum right back. And what I would say is that uh, you actually have electronic warfare systems on the Umbriel. So mm -hmm. here's what's going to happen is normally uh, power loss is one of those things where you spend one momentum to remove one point of power. However, because you are overloading the phasers and this is sort of a one shot and you do have electronic warfare systems, I will offer you the following. You can spend one momentum to remove three power, which looking at Deep Space October's sheet, you have to remove 15 power. And how much momentum do we have? Uh, by my count, you have two at the moment, so you would have to give me another three threat in order to pull this off. Question. Um, mm -hmm. Does Hitea have the commander's ability? which I think lets you convert a point of determination into three momentum. She does have that ability, yes. So Hatea could do that. And she does have uh, team dynamics. So yes, what I would say is if one of you gives her a value that would be applicable to the situation, that can indeed happen. What do you got, Stetko? Um... The night is always darkest just before the dawn. Sure, I like it. So yeah, Hatea gives a, a rousing speech. And Stetko, you fire out with the phasers. Uh, the phasers only do superficial damage to the umbilicals connecting the Umbriel and Deep Space October. But as we move back down to the computer core, uh, the effects are instantaneous, where not only do the force fields cut out, but the lights, life support... And the holograms all go out, as in no more power anywhere. And as this is happening, as the holograms are flickering out and more or less uh, dematerializing, uh, what you hear is the dying sort of voice of this AI. And it says, You cannot remove me. I am God. I will find you no matter where you send. And then it goes completely silent. On Raw, is the transporter dif dispersion field down? Uh, yes, yeah, sure, but uh, everything's down in the station, sure. Well, at least we can beam in without a problem. So yeah, Terrell, um, I, I do have a very important question for you. Are you still wanting to do that virus thing? Oh yeah, because he believes that the power is going to be up any moment, so he is going to uh, you know, Get over there and take care of it. All right. So, Terrell, uh, as you open the door manually, because, again, no power, and you rush over to one of the central computer cores that handles engineering in the holodecks, uh, you pull up your tricorder and get ready to upload your custom virus. Uh, now, this is going to be difficult, if only because the power is off. So I need you to roll me a daring in engineering. Uh, this will be a difficulty of five. And I would say if you let Jana in or Dottig in on what you're doing, they may assist you, but you have to be very specific what you're trying to do. As in, you can't just go, oh, I'm uploading a virus. You got to tell them what the virus is doing. Jana, remember the uh, remember the virus I put up into uh, the academy that almost got me expelled? Yes, I, I don't think that anyone is going to forget that. Yeah, There's actually on. a new regulation that they put in at Starfleet Academy regarding that sort of thing. 
Well, so what we'll do is upload it to uh, to DSO, reset it to factory specs, and purge this motherfucker out of the system. Uh, my only concern is, have you considered what that might do to the AI that contacted us earlier that is not, well, hell-bent on our murder? Uh, you know, he'll grow feathers. Uh, I can't eat a virus, so that really doesn't make it any appealing to me. So, um, you know, but why don't you let me take a look at that that virus for a second, okay? And what I'd like to do is just review the schematics or the programming code for the virus that he intends to upload. And could I make some kind of speculation as to how it might affect the uh, the computer system, particularly considering that it has been walled off by all those uh, those junctions that we were going to open up? Roll me a insight engineering uh, difficulty of two. Uh, experimental technology. I'll give it to you because this is technically an experimental virus. And uh, I already selected two dice, but I'm going to give you one threat to actually roll uh, another one. Okay. And I'll just roll that as a d20. All right, and that is sufficient. That's a total of four successes, so you get two momentum. You think that there is a possibility it could affect the other AI, but it's a remote possibility. Like, we're talking less than 10%. So what that's going to mean mechanically is the complication range on this is a 16 to 20. And if you roll a complication, it does affect the other, com uh, other AI that has more or less come into being. Okay. Uh, well, it looks like you've coded around the uh, the other artificial intelligence, and uh, if we're careful, it should well maintain its consistency. Uh, oh, I need your help. You've always got it. All right, and uh, I'm going to spend a determination for mm -hmm. um, some rules can be bent, others can be broken. Fair. And you said control engineering? Daring and engineering. All right, so same thing. And yeah, Jana, you're also going to assist with your own daring engineering. And uh, you want to buy another dice as well? Yeah. And there we go. Oh. All right. Well, that's, that's already two successes or four successes. And you get literally by the wire, you get the one more that you need. So for everybody else, what happens is Jana and Terrell uh, frantically upload a virus uh, onto the mainframe. And as power starts to flicker back to life, as the systems kick back on, what happens is all across the station... Literally every single hollow emitter creates a holographic representation of a chicken, like standard earth chicken. And the computer settings across every single system, except for the junction on deck 212, all return to factory default, meaning that every user setting, every program, everything it is like you literally have formatted the core but the good news is uh that ai the evil one anyway is um no longer around so small plus you know i finally got all those engineering controls just right i mean the temperature controls were hell to calibrate properly for a guy with fur so you know Think of it as you get to relive all those all those experiments. Did we just lose all of our holographic crew? I was waiting to see if somebody would ask. I need somebody to roll me a challenge die. A very important challenge die. Who feels brave? I, I will think, because I, think that I honor is what they should. <laughs> just one? Just one. Unfortunately, I now need you to roll me a D100. Oh, dear. What's the command here for that? Uh, slash R space 1D100. 
All right, so unfortunately, you have lost 42% of your holographic crew people. Replaced with chickens. <laughs> yep, they're chickens now. Damn. So yeah, I think with that, we're actually going to cut to probably a few days later uh, where we're actually going to go to uh, Kijwick's ready room. And uh, Kijwick, Boothby's not there. Let's get Boothby out of here. Uh, Kijwick, at this point, you've already made your report back to uh, Starfleet Command. Of course, they have uh, sent uh, a few more resources out the way to Deep Space October, but yeah. It doesn't look good. Uh, not only did a lot of your holographic crew not make it through it, but there's a lot of like little settings and little quirks that everybody's going to have to relive to get the station back to what it was. And it's one of those things where you're sort of sitting at your desk reviewing all this when all of a sudden uh, there's not a flash of light. There's not a hook spider from the ceiling, but a sense of unease sort of creeps up on you almost like something behind you is watching you Isrik will slowly turn around standing up and when you look behind you you see nothing you just see a window out into space but you still feel that unease Kishwick will leave his ready room and go over to the sensor station mm -hmm. and ask the officer there if there's any strange settings appearing in my ready room. And uh, as you do so, uh, they run a scan and uh, they report, uh, no, sir, there's nothing amiss. And Hatea kind of leans over and says, yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing anything odd, sir. Uh, is everything all right? What? Would Stucco feel the same uneasiness? Yes. Yes, she would. But you're From down the a source? few decks. Oh, oh From... so she's not in the... Oh, no, 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 not you're there. not on the okay. command deck right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so she would feel the uneasiness from the source causing it or from Kishwick? I think both in this instance. Okay. But all of them are on deck one. You are not on deck one. Right. Mm -hmm. Kiswick will nod hesitantly to Hatea and the sensor officer and go back into his ready room. Mm -hmm. um, he'll step over to the window where he felt whatever it was, and he'll just sort of speak under his breath. Don't know who all right, you what are. What do you say? And I don't know what you want from this station. But if you are related or in any way the source of the strange appearances of the old man on this station, you have our attention. And if there's something that you want, it would be nicer to get that over with now than to keep us waiting. And of course, there is no reply. And I think it's one of those things where we actually end the episode with the camera zooming out of that window until we just sort of see uh, Kijwick's office becoming a print prick of light on the greater Deep Space October. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's uh, that's where we're going to end today's session. What did you guys think? Great stuff. Fantastic. Very good. Yes. Sense we of love urgency a rogue hologram. to 11. Yes. <laughs> I love that I get got to blast the station. Yeah. <laughs> now, the of security, course, Jana, the chief of security gets to just fire. Yeah, of course, away. Jana's not only going to have to fix the Umbriel's phaser arrays, but also has to redo all the settings on the computer. So you know, Jana's life sucks, but oh well. <laughs> and and he needs therapy because he just participated in practically the genocide of half of our holographic crew. So. Yeah, it seems to happen to your characters a lot. I, I don't know what it is, but it just seems to keep happening. <laughs> Through no fault of anyone, it just seems to keep happening. <laughs> oh, I have to make Lord. sacrifices to the random number generator before we game next time. Mm -hmm. 
Oh lord. <laughs> All right. So uh this is where actually where uh we need to find uh somebody to raid before I run credits. So let's see who is online right now. Uh let's see. Uh ah, here we go. Uh I'm going to send you guys over to Celadon. Uh Celadon was a player in my uh Cyberpunk Red game that recently ended this last weekend. Uh, raid message. What is the raid message going to be? Um, let's make it an evil AI raid. That will be our, uh, our raid message. And yeah, I'm going to send you guys over to Celadon. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in. And, uh, you will see these, uh, ladies and gentlemen next week. Until then, later, later. <laughs>